Hey everyone, it's Sevi. I'll Hate Them is finally out, and thanks to early access, I've been able to test him out for several days at this point. If you've been waiting to play him for a long time like I have, I'm happy to say from the get-go that this daddy does not disappoint and has the potential to become an amazing addition to your Dendro teams. So I'm bringing you this guide to help you understand I'll Hate Them as a unit and how to maximize his roles. We'll cover his talents, kit, gameplay tips, constellations, best artifact and weapon builds, and his best team templates. Without further ado, let's dive into Alhatham. I'm Alhatham, the Academia Scribe. My work hours are posted outside the office. Alhatham is a Dendro unit whose kit centers around being on field to deal Dendro damage, apply Dendro, and trigger reactions, while his off field teammates are there to support him, add damage, and enable reactions. I'm pleased to say that he's very good in his intended roles, and for me, he's actually one of the more fun characters to play. His gameplay does have certain timings and combos that you can maximize for damage if you want to. I personally find this aspect of him quite engaging, but if you're still on the fence about him, I do advise you to do his trial run and see if his playstyle is your cup of tea. So to get familiar with his kit, let's start off with his talents. Alhatham's normal attacks consist of a 5-hit combo, with the 3rd hit dealing 2 instances of damage. It's very cool looking, especially with his high kick and flip. His charge attack deals 2 damage instances and costs 20 stamina, but his auto attacks are meant to be used in tandem with his skill and mirror mechanics, so let's look at those right away. Alhatham's skill can be activated with a press or by holding to aim it. Upon casting, he rushes to a target enemy or location. This deals an instance of dendro damage and also creates chisel light mirrors. Two mirrors are created if there were no mirrors upon casting, but only one is created if a mirror exists already. Chisel light mirrors are a vital part of his gameplay for two main reasons. First, as long as a mirror exists, his auto attacks will gain dendro infusion that cannot be overridden. This enables his on-field dendro DPS and application role. Second, when Alhazam does auto attacks while having mirrors, he also does projection attacks, which are another major source of dendro damage in application. A projection attack can be triggered every 1.6 seconds and is considered as skill damage. The number of mirrors correspond to how many hits will be dealt and the animation it does. One mirror hits once, shown by a blade in a square-shaped path. Two mirrors hit twice, shown via boomerang swords. And three mirrors hit thrice, shown by swords raining down on the enemy. I really like how he has different attack animations that correspond to his mirror count, as this makes him feel flashy to play with dynamic animations. One mirror will be removed at 4 second intervals. So as time goes by and you're unable to add mirrors, your projection attacks do less hits. But that's okay, since usual rotations can allow Alhatham to maintain 2-3 to three mirrors during most of his on-field time. I'll show an example of this later. To help generate mirrors, Alhatham's Ascension 1 passive makes his charged or plunging attack hit generate a mirror which can be triggered every 12 seconds. By incorporating charged or plunge attacks in his combos, this will help you achieve a higher mirror count and uptime. If you're feeling cool, you can use his skill to aim at the air and then do a plunging attack to generate mirrors consecutively. Yes, it might be more impractical, but it's pretty cool. Alhatham's energy generation is also related to his mirror mechanics. From testing, he creates one dendro particle every projection attack hit. It doesn't matter how many mirrors you have, each projection attack generates a constant one particle. Now for his burst. It costs 70 energy and has a cooldown of 18 seconds. Upon casting it, he creates this field in front of him that deals dendro hits based on how many mirrors you have when you cast it. It starts at 4 hits with no mirrors and maxes out at 10 hits with 3 mirrors. It consumes the mirrors you have upon casting, but it also creates mirrors based on how many you are lacking. Casting with no mirrors will create 3 mirrors, but at the other end, casting with 3 mirrors will create no mirrors. Note though that the mirror creation has a 2 second delay after the burst animation, so if you do normal attacks while the mirrors haven't generated yet, a few hits will only do physical damage. It sounds like a lot to consider, but here are some simple rotation combos that can help you start off. At C0, it's generally recommended to burst at the start of Alhatham's attack rotation. While it makes the burst deal only 4 hits, it gives you 3 mirrors to start your attacks with already. For the simplified combo, you can use his skill immediately to start applying Denjo right away, then do your preferred normal attack combos while triggering his projection attacks. One efficient attack string is doing 4 normal attacks and dash cancelling it, followed by 3 normal attacks with a dash cancel, then 3 normal attacks again, which is followed by a charged attack at the end to refresh his third mirror. Then do more 3-hit normal attack combos. 
if you want to squeeze in one more spread reaction, you can replace the last normal attack with a charged attack. This should give him around 12 seconds of field time. Another combo is to wait for the mirrors to spawn after the burst, then save your skill and charge attacks later for maintaining 3 mirrors. This results in a slightly longer field time of 14 seconds though. There can be other alternative attack strings that can fit your preference. You can also prolong or shorten his on-field duration depending on the scenario or just keep doing whatever attack strings you want. Find what you think is the best in the given scenario and also the easiest to execute for you. The main consideration is how to maximize the amount of Dendro application you can do and the mirrors you can maintain. Since Alhatham's main damage source and utility is from his elemental application to trigger Dendro reactions, it's also important to note his internal cooldown. For the most part, he has standard ICD on his abilities. What's special is his mirror's projection attacks. Standard ICD applies the elements every 3 hits, but his projection attacks have a special ICD that applies Dendro every 2 hits instead. It's another reason why his mirrors are important for his role. Another detail to note is that his skill and burst multipliers are actually a combination of attack and elemental mastery. This is good as it streamlines his stats into prioritizing EM as a spread DPS and dendro applicator. To give EM more value, his Ascension 4 passive makes each EM point give an additional 0.1% damage bonus to both his skill and burst, with the bonus maxing out at 100%. This is another reason why EM gets more value compared to attack stats. You'll want to level Alhatham up to 90 so he can make the most of his spread reactions since spread damage also scales on your character's level. All of his talents are vital damage sources, so you'll want to get all their levels as high as possible. But if you need to prioritize, level up his skill first as his mirrors are a significant source of damage. Then equally level up his normal attack and burst talents. <sighs> it's a little early for me. Let me get a cup of coffee first. Now, let's take a look at his constellations. I plan to do a separate video where I activate and showcase his constellations in more detail, but for now, let's evaluate their effects and worth. C1 allows his skill to have a cooldown reduction effect when his projection attacks hit. The skill cooldown is reduced by 1.2 seconds, and this can be triggered every second. One issue is that his projection attacks can only proc every 1.6 seconds by doing auto attacks, but in reality, it also won't perfectly proc that often. This means C1's cooldown reduction won't really be triggered every second. Another is that while it does reduce his skill cooldown, his burst cooldown remains the same. So in teams with 20 second or so rotations, this constellation isn't really helpful as you're still confined to the burst cooldown and rotation time. However, one practical scenario where I can see this work is using Alhatham in a team with a much shorter 12 to 15 second rotation. If so, he'd only burst every other rotation due to their different cooldowns, but at least this reduces his ER needs. It's also more useful in co-op scenarios, but generally speaking, it's not an early constellation worth aiming for. C2 lets him get a 50 EM buff stack every time a mirror is created. Each stack lasts 8 seconds and this maxes out at 4 stacks, so if you start with his burst, that's 3 mirrors generated for 150 EM. Then you can trigger his skill after to reach the max stacks. It's basically a damage boosting constellation. An okay one, but not an insane one. C3 increases his skill level by 3, which increases the damage of his mirrors. C4 gives him another buffing effect when using his burst, and the buff depends if he consumed or created mirrors. If you consume mirrors, each one consumed will give a 30 EM buff to all your party members, which makes it somewhat of a team support buff. But if you generate mirrors, then each mirror gives a 10% dendro damage bonus to Alhatham, which is nice for boosting his own damage. All these buffs last for 15 seconds. C5 increases his burst level by 3 for higher burst damage. And finally, his C6 makes it so that his burst will now generate 3 mirrors no matter what. And if Alhatham generates a mirror when he already has max mirrors, he gets a whopping bonus to his crit rate and crit damage. This effect synergizes with his C2 and C4 as well, compounding the damage increase you can get. This can also change your preferred rotation since now it's more ideal to burst in the middle of his rotation. All in all, it's a large boost to Alhatham's DPS. I think he's already excellent at C0. His constellations don't introduce anything major or wildly game-changing to his playstyle, which is very nice as he already feels complete without them. Humankind is not a vehicle for knowledge, nor is knowledge the aim of humankind. 
Moving forward, let's review how to build Alhatham's artifacts. We'll start with his main stats. For the sands, an EM stat is your priority. There can be a case for an attack sands if you don't have a good EM sands or if the attack one has much superior substats, but in equal terms, EM will outperform attack. For his goblet, Dendro damage is easily the best option. If you don't have one, a temporary EM goblet can work in the meantime. For the circlet, choose between crit rate or crit damage, whichever gets you closer to a 1 is to 2 crit ratio. Then for substats, you want to prioritize getting enough ER from substat rolls alone to address his ER needs. Along with that, look mainly for crit and EM stats. Attack stats are also okay, but will be less valuable versus crit or EM. Alhatham's energy recharge is also important as his attack rotations involve his burst. His target ER will vary based on certain factors. Around 140% is a good initial target if you comp him with another Dendro unit who can help generate Dendro particles. However, as a solo Dendro unit, Alhatham's ER starts going up. 150-170% to 170 could be a target range, but this can still fluctuate depending on the mentioned factors. The common scenario for this to occur is if Alhatham takes on a more driver and and applicate their role for teams like Hyperbloom or Burgeon. At this point, giving him an ER Sans becomes an option. A third scenario is where Alhazen can just burst every other rotation, which greatly reduces his ER needs to about 100-120%. to However, I want to emphasize that this is a noticeable damage loss, especially as a spread DPS, and so I would mainly consider it only if his main role is to apply Dendro since that can be done via his skill and auto attacks alone and he won't be the main source of damage anyway. Next up, let's discuss his artifact sets, and they're thankfully very simple. He has two top picks for a full set. There's a 4-piece Deepwood Memories thanks to its Dendro Damage Bonus and Valuable Resistance Shred, but it's only recommended if no one else in the team is using it. If it's already equipped on someone else, putting Alhatham on a Deepwood set becomes redundant since the 4-piece effect does not stack. In which case, the 4-piece Gilded Dreams is his next best set. Combined with a Deepwood equipped teammate, this set will allow him to achieve his highest damage ceiling thanks to its EM and attack buffing effect. However, farming a full gilded set with great subsets can be difficult. And so, a more efficient and still competitive alternative is a mix of 2-piece 2-piece EM or 2-piece EM plus 2-piece Deepwood. In fact, a 2-piece 2-piece EM combo isn't that far off from the Gilded Dream set since the stat difference versus the 4-piece effect of Gilded is about 3-4 to four substat rolls. So if you can compensate with really good substats, and since there are various ways to get a 2-piece EM set, a 2-piece 2-piece EM combo is still a very highly recommended option even versus the 4-piece Gilded Dreams. A two a 2-piece attack set is also fine, but it is worse than a 2-piece EM set, and a 2-piece emblem set can also be recommended if you're still lacking in ER substats. Rather than lacing my words with rhetoric, I prefer speaking factually. For the other half of his build, let's take a look at his best weapon choices. As a general rule, Alhazen will not want attack substat weapons and will prefer those with EM, ER, or crit substats. Starting with free-to-play options, the Iron Sting and Tokabo Shigure are your two top free weapons. They're both very, very similar, but the Shigure is better in single target due to its passive affecting only one enemy. The Iron Sting will cost you a billet, while the Shigure is only available if you got it from its event. If you've played long enough, the Festering Desire is also a possible free-to-play choice. It becomes more valuable if Alhazen has a high ER requirement in his team, and at least its skill crit rate and damage buff help with boosting his mirror damage. The Sapwood Blade is another alternative ER weapon that's at least craftable. It has more value if he's lacking the needed ER, and the passive at least can boost his EM if you're able to pick up the leaf. The Harbinger of Dawn is a cheap to raise 3 star that's a very niche situational option. It should only be used with a very strong shielder like Zhongli because your HP needs to be 90% or above for its passive to work. But if you maintain that, it gives a huge boost to your crit, and since Alhatham scales mainly from EM, its low attack stat isn't as bad. For non-free-to-play 4 stars, the Cephos Moonlight is a good option with similar main stats to Iron Sting. The difference is that its passive instead gives him ER based on his EM, which is helpful if he needs the extra ER. The Black Sword can be a viable option if you already have one, though it's very close with his other 4 star options despite being a battle pass weapon. Its unique advantage is it at least gives Alhatham a way to self-regenerate HP. The Favonia Sword can also be a niche option for teams with very energy-hungry teammates, and it easily resolves his ER needs. 
Then for his 5 star choices, the Light of Foliar Incision as his signature weapon is clearly the best of the best for him. It has an insanely high crit damage stat and its passive converts EM into added damage. Though the weapon has a lower base attack than most other 5 stars, this isn't really a concern for Alhatham. The current 5 star crit swords are also generally better options than 4 star weapons. Their most important overall benefit is to help you achieve a good crit ratio on him. Finally, the Freedom Sworn is also a pretty good option thanks to its EM stat, auto attack damage bonus buffs, and attack buff, all of which Alhatham can take advantage of. Considering both his artifact and weapon options, Alhatham is relatively easy and free-to-play friendly to build. He works very well on even just two-piece artifact combos, and he has many weapon choices for all types of spenders. Most people are wary of interacting with me. I hope to keep things this way. Lastly, let's take a look at his team comps. Alhatham works best as an on-field denjo damage dealer, applicator, and or driver. In a quicken team, Alhatham will act as an on-field spread DPS. The basic format is to simply pair him with another electro to create your quicken core. Then the remaining slots are flexible. You can slot in another denjo or electro unit to add more spread or aggravate damage. Geo can fit in and your best choices are either Zhongli or Albedo. Bennett also works as a buffer and healer. An animal unit can be slotted in, but if they're holding a viridescent venerer set, they can only buff your electro unit's damage since denjo cannot be swirled. They can also deal their own aggravate damage by infusing their abilities with electro if possible. Consider what roles you want to fill, like if you need a healer, shielder, buffer, off-field DPS, and so on. Just keep in mind to have one Deepwood Memories user in the team for the Dendro Resistance Shred. As a special mention, Nahida is a very good teammate for Alhatham. She is able to act as a battery, provide a generous EM buff while he's on-field, and contribute her own off-field spread damage. Next, Alhatham can be the Dendro Applicator and Driver for Bloom-based teams. To start, you'll need to comp him with a Hydro unit or two. Since he's mainly doing attacks while on-field, the ideal Hydros would be those with off-field application. Singcho or Yelan immediately come to mind as off-field Hydro Applicators. They synergize very well with Alhatham since he drives their bursts while he's on-field. If you do plan to use Alhatham in a Bloom, Hyper Bloom, or Burgeon-based team, I strongly suggest building your Singcho for that if you haven't yet, as he's one of the best options. And I would even say essential to comp with Alhatham in such teams. Barbara, Kokomi, or a burst-focused Ayato can apply Hydro off-field too, but they will have slower Hydro application, so if you want, they can be comped with another Hydro applicator for faster core generation. After you've secured your combo of Alhatham and Hydro, you'll be left with one or two flex slots, which lets you decide what type of Bloom team it is. A pure Bloom team is possible, which means you only put Dendro, Hydro, Animo, or Geo units in. Generating Dendro cores will be your main priority and damage source. You can also slot in a Cryo, which is possible since Cryo complements the Bloom reaction process. This creates a Freeze Bloom or Fridge team. But it's harder to optimize a Bloom team as you need to account for who's triggering Blooms and build EM on them accordingly. Additionally, Bloom damage by itself has a lower ceiling compared to its enhanced versions. You'll also need a strong enough healer to counteract the self-damaging mechanic of Bloom. And so, the ideal route if you want a pure Bloom team is with Nilu. A Nilu-Alhatham Bloom combo will be restricted to only Dendro and Hydro units to trigger Nilu's passive. In this team, Alhatham acts as an effective on-field driver, while off-field Hydro applicators can trigger or enable Blooms too. With Nilu's Bloom damage buffing passive, the entire team's Blooms also become much stronger, and it matters less who's triggering them. If you slot in an Electro unit to trigger your Dendro cores, this turns it into a Hyper Bloom team, one of the strongest and easiest team templates to play. Your Hydro application will also have an effect on this team's damage source. Fast Hydro application means you'll generate Dendro cores more, which makes this team more reliant on Hyper Bloom damage. But with slow application, you won't get rid of the Quicken Aura easily, which means Alhatham and the Electro unit have more room to deal spread and aggravate damage. That makes the damage source come more from a mix of Quicken and Hyperbloom reactions, which is a quick bloom team. The Electro unit should have consistent off field Electro application to trigger cores and complement Alhatham's on field time. Raiden Shogun and Kuki Shinobu are the top two picks for the trigger role. 
To a certain extent, Yai and Lisa can also work as off-field hyperbloom triggers. Yai just needs her skilled turrets, so at least she has no ER issues, but with Lisa, she'll have a much higher ER requirement. Their dendro core targeting is harder to control, though, compared to Raiden or Kuki. Alternatively, if you slot in a pyro unit instead of electro, then it becomes a burgeon team. But your choices for an off-field burgeon trigger are very limited at the moment. Toma will be the ideal pick as he gives your team protection against burgeon self-damage and he synergizes with Alhatham who drives Toma's burst. If you want to have fun with a variety of reactions and not worry too much about triggering specific ones, then you can consider a veggie soup team, which basically just puts in a concoction of hydro, electro, and pyro, triggering whatever reactions are available. Just enjoy all the colors and numbers that pop up on your screen. One more option, though very much less recommended, is a burn team, which just requires constant pyro applicators combined with Alhatham to re-trigger burn. This can be comped with a VV animal unit to reduce pyro resistance or an electro unit to turn this into a combination of burn and overload. And that's it for this guide. If you've known me long enough or watched my streams, it's probably no surprise to you that I really, really enjoy Alhatham. I was a huge fan of him before he became playable, so I definitely did not want to be disappointed by his kit. But now that I've gotten to know him on a more personal level, I can genuinely say that I find his gameplay and animations fun and flashy. More so, his performance as an on-field dendro applicator and DPS is very good. So if you're looking for a unit to fill those roles, he might satisfy you like he did for me. Let me know your thoughts on him in the comments. I will be exploring Alhatham more in future videos, so if you're looking for more content on him, be sure to subscribe, give this video a like while you're at it, and I will see you soon. Take care! If there's nothing to do, then I'll just put on my soundproof earpieces and nap for a while.